Hi guys, we're back with another video. In today's video, we'll go through all the settings and strategies in NHL 23, and together we will decide what works the best for us. Let's not lose any time and jump into the video. Okay, obviously, the first thing you go into the settings, what we want to do is we want to make sure that all the on-ice hints are turned off. Even if you're new to the game, believe me, they will not help you in any kind of way. They will just mess around with the animations on the ice, so it will definitely not make your gaming experience and playing enjoyable. Okay, let's go to accessibility, if I even pronounce it right. So obviously we don't need to do anything with the colorblindness, if you're not colorblind. Same with brightness, again, you can do all these settings here, but uh, technically you never change them. Player name indicator, I would still keep it on, so at least when you play it, you know who you are passing and who is passing to you. Player indicator size, I like it leaving on the small, because I just don't think that that little thing on the top of the player's head, you really need it huge. The puck size, I actually find it like uh, it's useful when it's large, because as much as stupid it would not sound, it actually helps to see where the puck is when, when you're rushing into the player's zone. Puck highlight, I also like to leave it large. The better visibility of the puck I have, the better I can make sure that I do the poke checks right and I know where the puck is on the ice. So in audio, uh, I personally turn everything off because I do record videos, I do stream. I like the soundtracks this year and there is nothing wrong about them. I do not like the uh, like commentary usually because they're pretty mean if you do something wrong, which is fun, but uh, I personally turn it off. So it's, this is just a personal preference. Same about the controller accessibility. So control skill sticks, this is the controller I use. If you want a little bit easier, playstyle use the hybrid. I know a lot of people still in the community use hybrid and there's nothing wrong about it. I think uh, technically maybe you cannot score a Michigan with the hybrid hybrid controls, but you still can definitely win a games and even get to division one. I personally would like it, leave it on the skill sticks. Okay, let's go to audio and visual settings. So here I like to keep the auto zoom off because technically what it does every single time there is an action, the camera will auto zoom. So it looks really nice, don't take me wrong, but then in the same time as soon as it zoom it, you lose all the visibility what is actually happening, let's say, in a blue line. And if you're one if you want to pass the puck back to the guys on a blue line, you actually don't see what their positions and you know that you don't know where they are. It doesn't, doesn't matter if it's a blue line or any other zone. It just makes the eyes, the visibility on the eyes a little bit smaller. So I personally turn it off and I suggest everyone to do it as well. Camera, uh, a lot of people use uh dynamic high or I know some of still use dynamic low because they like how it looks from viewing perspective and like i said if you if you just want to see like a nice graphics and uh see the players a little bit more zoomed in it's really good but if you want to see the most of the ice zone is the camera setting to go with camera perspective prefer up you don't change anything here like uh, we already did the player indicator you keep it small off screen player indicator we leave it on if you turn it off you just don't know where the player is indicated on the ice Player name, again, we leave it on. Uh, total indicator shift left, again, we leave it on because we really need to know when all these indicators, so where are the players and who are we passing. X for ability visuals. So this is technically only a visual setting, but I like to see the X factor ability for my opponent on the face of, let's say, or the goalie, what kind of X factor ability he have. It's just something that maybe last year I found that when the goalie had it between the pipes or some of the players had, like, let's say, have a gold truculence. I was just trying to avoid them, so I know it did. In the middle of the game, it let me change my playstyle a little bit. This again, we are goal flow play. We leave it on. It doesn't really matter. I don't think anyone turns it off. Fighting instructions. I personally turn it off because I really don't see any benefit out of it. But uh, if you are new to the game and you want to some help with the uh, fighting, then it it will basically tell you what to do and when to press the button. So I turn it off, goalie camera I leave it low, and defensive positioning I leave it off. Guys, if you want to see any more NHL 23 content, make sure you stop by on Twitch because I'm live 5 days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So if you have any questions, make sure you stop by. Okay, now let's go to the controller settings. So this is pretty simple, so we leave the skill stick or you can do the hybrid again it shows everything on the screen what do you need to press and when uh obviously my camera is covering some of that but like you can see in defense one it gives you some understanding what to press and what kind of moves i like to leave it in the uh, in the skill stick because then technically you have to press less buttons but it gives you more access to all these cool and fancy moves 
auto backscale this is the most important thing guys make sure you turn it off otherwise whenever you will have a two on one and you will need to rush back into your zone your player will suddenly start backscale and we we don't want that because then we lose the speed and we just cannot play defensively very good so this is very important guys turn it off auto hustle leave it on camera relative shooting controls uh leave it as it is always up you it's up to you i personally leave it as it is it doesn't actually give me anything vibration i turn it off i absolutely hate when my controller is vibrating but if you, this is again it's a personal preference it doesn't actually affect your performance okay the passing percentage i know so just to explain what exactly the passing percentage means so there is a circle around the player we technically don't see and depends on this then this number let's say 90 100 it's how big that circle around the player is is that receiving the zone or where he's receiving the pass so let's say if you will turn it all down then that circle will be so small so you may you need to make sure that the pass is really accurate just to the stick i find that 100 actually is not the right thing to do i like to leave it in the 95 i don't i cannot really explain why technically it's only five but then the players are receiving and accepting the pass more accurate than it's on the 100. And I did play around with that the last three years, and I found that every single year, obviously this year may be different, but so far, 95 is the right way to go. Goalie controls default. I really don't see anything. You can like alternative, and if you are playing manual goalie, I just like to leave it uh, default. So it's basically when your goalie receives the pass, you just uh, the puck, you just pass it, and there is no any changes. Goalie press. This you leave on. Human goalie covers auto and then human goalie sweeps on obviously these are the settings you can go where you can see how to do the backhand toe drag between the leg pass and all these instructions are here so when you whenever you struggle with something let's say in a hut rush this is where you go and you quickly see how to do like a jump dig or skate kick dig or any of the digs you need to do in the hut rush to get more xp okay guys the next thing let's jump into the strategies so as you can see, this year the strategy is a little bit different, so it actually shows you straight away all the players. Same again, like you just have to press L2 if you're gonna go to the MN strategies, power play and penalty kill. Same about the penalty lines and all this to the event strength. Then technically what we can see, then we just press the edit lines and then you just choose which line you are actually editing. Like you, you can, or you can scroll it down. So that's the difference between how it was last year and how it is this year. So obviously I did play a lot yesterday and I also did a lot of research and the best strategies during the technical test. So I think the Crash the Net this year will be really good and we will finally be able to do it because the goalies are making more saves now. So you don't need to do behind the net. So technically when you did the behind the net last year, that was the wraparound goals you were scoring. So now all you want to do is make sure all your players are just crashing the net. So again, carry dump. I would leave it somewhere in the middle, same about the cycle shot, energy and don't block, I would just put it all to the tens. And I would do that with every, the first two lines. The third line and the fourth line, I would like to leave it an overload and I would just, again, these are the strategies I'm using and I think they will work this year really, really good. I would just suggest you guys to try them out and if they don't work for, for your play style, make sure you you're playing around because everyone plays different so it doesn't mean that if someone is using these strategies it works for everyone this is just a suggestion for you to try because i think this year this may be one of the meta strategies so these would be my offensive strategies so if we go to the defense then all the line and pinch i would take all this down to the zero and cycle and shoot i would put it back all to the 10 so and i will do that for all my three defensive pairings that's the team strategy so it's one two two passive I like to switch it between aggressive and passive. Again, this year we can actually see what the impact is between when you switch it, you see where are your players and it actually shows their position. So when we will play around with these strategies this year, it actually gives you some kind of visual information. So you actually, say, okay, I like these players being there. And I think it's helpful for players who are new. Nitro zone one, four. I know we did want to use that last year. It didn't work because unfortunately how the game it was, how the game played. This year, I think it will actually help and it will play out. So the, all you want to do is like you want to leave your center in the middle and then obviously all the four guys back on a neutral zone. That pro, uh, force check, like I like to play around between zero and between one. Uh, depends how it goes. Defensive pressure, protect the net uh, because I really want everyone to 
protect the next the collapsing is the same thing again i like i want everyone in front and make sure then they block the shots and offensive pressure aggressive again like a lot of people are so then they're using like a full attack i like just being aggressive like my play style is being aggressive i'm not someone who just stands in the zone waits when the opponent makes a real mistake i just like the one go full in because i think how the game feels now it actually allows to use us all the aggressive close support for the quick breakout and those would be my streams team strategies so let's go to the power play so power play format i like the shooting uh i know people use 131 i just like everyone in the power play to shoot all the time and so far it's working very good same about the face of format i like it aggressive because technically as soon as i win a face off i just really want like everyone being aggressive to the puck and make sure we are making the moves we're making the plays and we are shooting the puck Offensive pressure, I just leave it on standard. Carry you dump, uh, I leave it in the middle. And then power play breakout, all five back. Uh, quick breakout, close support. And those would be my power play strategies. For the penalty kill is 1-1-2. Uh, and defensive, really, there is no big difference. It's just 1-1-2. And uh, so far, it plays really good. But again, these are only the strategies I use. So you guys don't have to use them. But I would just suggest to try them out. Because I think a lot of them this year will be like meta. And again, it depends what kind of like uh, player you are. If you're a Division 1 player, you probably may choose different strategies. These are for the average casual player. And so far, it, it really works very well for me. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Let me know down in the comment section below which strategies are you using. Are you still sticking to the ones we used last year or you're trying something different? And I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good one. See you next time.